Hello and welcome to another episode of Advanced WordPress Theme Development. In the previous video we learned about how to set up the webpack and Babel and stuff like that. This is going to be one of the most interesting and fruitful episodes of Advanced WordPress Theme Development. And do you know why? Well because we're going to talk about a problem that most developers face. At least I did. So we're going to talk about fonts and libraries and what are the actual issues with when using fonts. So I'm sure you'll agree to me that you may have had some issues with font jumping, right? So what is the font jump issue? Well, I'm going to show it to you. I'm sure many of you must have already included Google fonts and what happens is that when you include Google fonts, it gives us the link that we can then include into our project and then it goes ahead and downloads the fonts from the Google font. But the problem is that while the font is being downloaded from the Google API which is fonts.google.com uh, we can have like a font jump. So let me demonstrate that for you. So let's say we go to our fonts.google.com and then we search for the Lotto font and then let's just include a couple of them over here like so and then these are included I'll go to embed and I'm just going to copy this link and ideally you should like enqueue it into by going into assets and then using the WP register style but this is just for demonstration purposes so just hard code it which is not something that I recommend but this is only for de demonstration purposes I will include it inside of the head section so it will be loading these fonts okay and uh, if you want to understand what this display swap is I will come to that in a moment okay so we are including the fonts over here and then also in the style.css I have to include the font family so let's go ahead and put that in the body section for the body I'm going to include this font and I'm just going to for the time being I'm going to put important over here why because remember we are using bootstrap so bootstrap is also including its own font family uh, so you know we want to just want to override that for the moment there are different ways of not putting important because I'm highly against putting important unless unless it's really required you could actually load your style your fonts after boot bootstrap uh, style so then this will be applied but this is like I said just for demonstration purposes okay so let's take a look since I've included this uh, font family so what it, this is going to do is when your script reaches here it's going to start loading the font but until then what it's going to do is it's going to use the sans serif which is a fallback font so while the fonts are being downloaded from Google fonts it's going to use sans serif and once it's downloaded it's going to show Lato and then because of this you will see a font jump okay so what we're going to do is let's go on to our website and I'm just going to open this in incognito mode to avoid caching because you'll say to me hey Imran uh, wouldn't the fonts be cached well yes it will be so probably in the second or third time it might not uh, show the font jump to your user but it would definitely happen the first time because first time they wouldn't be the fonts wouldn't have been cached for a new user let's say if you don't have the caching enabled okay so let's hit it oh, so did you did you notice there was a font jump let me zoom in for you take a look I'm just gonna do a hard refresh and notice what happens on internet internationalization do you see the font jump looks really ugly to be very honest I mean I wouldn't wouldn't want to have this font jump into my side see what happens see this take a look take a look how it's jumping right see so what is happening is it's loading up the sans serif which is default font and then when the fonts are loaded it's, it's picking up that so how do we actually solve this problem okay well if you have solved this problem yourself and if it's worked for you please feel free to share that into the comment section but I'm gonna talk about some of the solutions that we may have for this alright so what are the possible solutions for this well the first one is that we can hide the text until the fonts load but this would cause Fout, which is flash of invisible text. Okay, to achieve this, we could actually use web font loaders, which basically add 
font specific classes to the DOM and it gives us a set of events which we may use to control the loading experience like setting the visibility hidden of the text while it's loading but if we really hide the text it doesn't look good right like when the website is loaded and while the fonts are being loaded we are actually hiding the text but it isn't a good experience for the user so you will still have the FOUT okay right second option would be that we could find the fallback fonts that look like actual fonts and if not the same then at least there will be a minimum difference again not a great solution to this okay so how do we solve this problem well so I will introduce something new to you which many of you may not be aware of or some of you may have and that is called Google Web Fonts Helper okay so there is a library that is available um, on github uh, which helps you directly download all the .eot, .woof, .woof2, .svg, .ttf files of the Google font. Okay, so how we can solve is that instead of requesting the fonts from the Google API, we can actually download the Google fonts and then we won't have that issue of the FOUT because we would already have the font downloaded locally, right? So furthermore, this library provides the char set customization and CSS snippets hence getting your fonts ready for your local hosting should finally be a breeze so let me take you there so this is the library Google Web Font Helper and uh, what we can do is we can go into this link okay and then search for the Google font that we want of course if you are using a custom font you would only already have a copy of it so you wouldn't really need this helper a web font helper but if you are but if you're using Google font then this will be useful so let's click on Lato it's going to ask you what all do you need so I want 300 300 italic italic 700 and 700 italic okay and then it asks you what do you want you want to select the modern browsers or you want to have the best support I'll go with the best support okay and then you can see that you don't have to write all of this because it already uh, gives you a file uh, with the path and everything right so in the folder prefix I'm going to use this as a prefix and then put slash because that's where my fonts are going to reside okay and then I'm then I'm just going to go ahead and download it there you go and just show it in finder and then copy it and then paste it here there you go so now you can see that you've got all of the fonts the EOT SVG Wolf right all of the fonts that are available so I didn't have to do worry about anything and then all I have to do is come back copy this so my font.cs is ready all I have to do is just come over here and paste it awesome and now you can see that my URL will be this which is Lato v16 latin so this is a directory because my root is here and then I go inside of this and then just gonna get all of these files so if I hit like this it takes me to that particular file yep awesome so now what we're gonna do is we're going to remove this link from here and I'm gonna come to my classes assets and I'm gonna paste this NQ style here so basically I'm using get template directory URI and then I'm using the path up until this font.css and then just including that and let's take a look now what happens do we still get the fonts up or don't let's copy this open it in incognito mode refresh it and there you go there's no font jump let's refresh it again no font jump refresh it again no font jump awesome great so there's no font jump congratulations we managed to achieve what we're looking for of course um, we won't be including the fonts we have a choice actually whether or not to include the fonts like this and increase one extra HTTP request or to minimize the number of HTTP requests I can also import this into one of my CSS files so yeah so in the next episode when we are going to go ahead and set up our SAS we will just import this font CSS instead of going ahead and making an extra HTTP request and enqueuing it over here I think we can club it together with the 
style uh, main.css yeah awesome so i hope you did like the video if you did please give a thumbs up and do subscribe to my channel if you aren't already and uh, do give star to my repository to support my work and thanks to all the beautiful people who have given me stars on my repository all of these people thank you all and also follow me on github and twitter as well my twitter handle is Cody Tech. and one of the good resources that you can utilize is aquila wordpress theme this is project you can see they've got all of it's got all of the notes depending on the topic that you want and the one we are looking for is the fonts so you can read there are a lot of blogs available uh, that you can read about this fout so by Chris Coyer as well so you can read about it so if you need more information if you want to dig deeper you can do that and then if you like my work you can also nominate me for github stars by going on to stars.github.com slash nominate I would appreciate that thank you very much see you in the next video take care bye bye